Hi everyone, it's Elise from Kitten Clatter Coloring Classes, and today I'm sharing a free pencils tutorial for you on how to create a simple background with a sparkly effect that can be applied behind any image at all. You can do this technique with any color blend, and why not check out my free color blend charts over on the website at www.kitandcloud.com via the color blend charts tab for lots more inspiration. This tutorial is actually chapter one for my brand new Festive Foods coloring class release. This is a great beginner's class and there's one class for markers and one for pencils, of which you can choose to do either or both. I'll take you through a big range of art fundamentals that will apply to all of your coloring after the lesson and you even get a full printable step-by-step -step picture booklet to accompany the class video as well. You can find more information on this class just on the homepage of my website as well. And I hope I'll see you after this free tutorial to color the rest of the image with me. If at any time you feel stuck with your coloring, overwhelmed, or like you aren't achieving the results you'd expect, I always do free one-on-one -on -one private tutoring with all of my students, even those in our free lessons. So please reach out by email or private message to me anytime at all, and let's chat together to help you feel more confident with your coloring. Okay, let's get started on the lesson. So we're going to get started today on the background. Now, the reason why I'm starting with the background is because we've got such a large space that we are coloring in. This produces a lot of the dust off the pencils, and this can smudge over the paper as we use our hands. Now, the benefit of doing this first is if we smudge, we can just erase it. So it should clean up nice and easy with just a good eraser. But if we've already colored all this and then we come in and do the red, there is a chance that we're going to smudge red into the image. Now, a couple of things you can do to prevent smudging is you can get a piece of just normal uh, printer paper and place it under your hand as you color. So you're moving back and forth over the piece of paper. So that's a really good tip to avoid smudging as well and using your eraser, of course. Now we do have our pencil dusters, which are also very, very important and helpful to prevent smudging. So I know I went over this at the start of the tutorial um, in that mini blending video, but having one of these or an equivalent nearby can be really, really helpful to remove all that dust and build up on the page. These are back in the shop as well. They were gone for a couple of years. They are limited edition though. So if you want one of these, please grab one quickly so you don't miss out. They've been designed uh, by me specifically for pencil coloring. So the fibers on here, I actually handpicked them myself. So they're softer than a makeup brush. The color as well is designed to uh, hide any of that pencil dust that gets absorbed. So it's meant to be like multi colored through there too and you can easily clean it with soapy water so that's a great thing to have on hand before i had one of these i just used to use like an emu or ostrich feather the nice big floaty feathery ones so in my older videos you'll probably see me using them but the problem was they weren't super practical and i broke quite a few of them and then ended up giving them to my cat so <laughs> that's why um, with all of your help we actually designed these over in our facebook group Okay, so we're going to start in this background. I wanna have a really nice, rich red blend. Let's go full out and make this quite festive looking. But of course you can do any color blend at all. You're not stuck with just doing red. This technique will stay the same no matter which color you use. So if you're someone who feels really nervous about going outside of the class parameters and picking your own blends, I'm going to give you a little challenge. Why don't you pick a completely different color blend to do here today? I mean, if you want to do it red because it's it's a gift and it's or you're going to have it on display or whatever, that's totally okay. But if you find that you always stick to what we do in class and you feel like you're one of those people that really has a hard time pushing outside of it, then I want you to pick a different blend. You can find a huge range of color blends over on my website. So you can always use these as a base for how to start. You can use any of those blends in this background area. All that we need to make sure is our edge is nice and dark and rich. I'm going to introduce a bit of black into the blend to help me get that. And then we're going to fade in and get lighter around the center of this square. 
Now this square was not part of the original image. I actually added that around the image itself and I'll uh, have in your uh, class uh, stamp uh, folder, you'll actually have just the image and you'll have it with that square drawn in. When doing a background, it can be nice to have like a little confined space like this for the background so that you're not having to do the entire page. If you're a card maker, it's a really nice way to inject a little bit of a background without feeling like you have to color everything as well because that can make it harder to use in your card designs. And so you don't have to do a square, you could do a rectangle, a circle. If you've got die cuts, you could place them around your image and trace it. But I've been doing this sort of a background recently in our classes to show you that you can start experimenting. A background does not need to take up an entire page behind an image. It can just be a snippet to add a little bit of extra detail and color and to draw your eye into the image itself. So your background should always complement what your story is that you're trying to tell. And you can see, even though our background is really simple, the way the colors are done is they draw your eye in toward the central point of our image because we're darker around the edges and the lighter glow, which is where your eyes naturally go, is in toward that center part. So again, it's thinking about not only the type of background, but the colors that we're using and even the way that we control the light to always draw our eye back to this main focal point. All right, so let's go ahead and start our coloring here today. We're just gonna do a nice simple blend, just like I showed you at the start of the video. I'm going to start with a little bit of black and make sure this pencil is nice and sharp for this step. And all we're going to do here is I'm just going to come straight along the outline that I've already drawn. Now you can do a few layers of this along the outer edge. We can start to work on flattening the tooth and getting just a really nice crisp line. But then as we blend in toward the center, my pressure gets a little lighter. So I'm not aiming to flatten all of the tooth down the paper right away. I can do a few layers to build up the color so it's not super duper light, but I still want to see some of those white speckles. So what that does is those little white speckles, that's the tooth of your paper, when we have them showing, it means that we have the ability to still build up our colors on the page. The paper will still hold pigment. Once it's all flattened down and you can't see those little speckles, it's really hard to layer the colors up. And that's when they will start to look like block colors rather than you changing the tone of the color. So we leave a little bit of the tooth there because when we come back with our reds, we'll be able to tone the black out and make it look just like a darker red rather than black. But our darkest reds in most pencil brands are not dark enough to give us that really deep, rich edge. So adding the black as an underlay is going to affect the tint of this color. Now, tint is when we add black or white to change the value of a color. And value is how light or dark a color is. So this is really important because this is some of your art foundation. So it gives you some understanding of how color works. So we're using the black to adjust how dark the red is going to appear at the edge of the page. It's really important when we do this that the color ends softly as we get further in toward the middle. So what I'm trying to avoid is this. See if I use a lot of pressure and, a, and it's all consistent, the color ends in a hard line and I get that really straight edge. When I come over the top of that with the next color, I'm still going to have that edge and it's not going to fade. So what we want to do is as we get further out, we want our pressure to slowly soften and it gets lighter and lighter until it just fades out. So you can see right there, I've gone over that edge and I've kind of fuzzied it up. I've lost that harshness and it just fades out. So this is really important. It's controlling the pressure that you place on the pencil. It's very normal for people to be heavy handed when first starting with pencils. And we tend to want to try and get rid of all those little speckles in the paper a bit prematurely. 
So I want you to be really mindful of this and try not to press down too hard. However, on the other end of the spectrum, I always have people that use basically no pressure. So I see this a lot. So, so, so light because they're trying to keep everything smooth. And it will stay smooth and they don't get any of those hard lines between colors. But this is so light that it's going to take about 20 layers to color and probably quite a few hours. So all that's going to happen there is you end up frustrating yourself with how long a project takes you to do. So if this is you, I need you to increase your pressure a little bit. It's okay to have a little bit of confusion about how much pressure to use when you first start out. It's just practice because you are essentially getting comfortable with the medium and we need to actually use it to get comfortable with it. So I often hear from people who watch videos first and I, I kind of don't recommend this to be honest because I find people will watch and then they don't really start. They either talk themselves out of it, it's hard, it's long, it looks really difficult or um, they don't have the time now and well, they've doubled the amount it's going to take them to do a class by watching it. So I don't really recommend this. Uh, instead, I would recommend you to maybe watch like a little portion, maybe like a minute, press pause. You can rewind and do it with the class as well. That way you still get to see in advance what's happening without sort of wasting a few hours. And that's going to help you sort of uh, speed up how long it takes you to do your class as well. okay if you need more or less layers than I'm doing here today just while you get comfortable with those pencils and so again I recommend just jumping in if you're someone who's watching here today once you get started it's so much easier to keep going and it's so much easier than it looks as well it always looks tricky and it looks like there's a ton of information but the more we do something the easier it gets not the more we watch something, the easier it gets. So that's important to remember. We aren't aiming to get this perfect here today. We're just aiming to be really present, focusing on exactly what's in front of you. And that allows us to just forget about some of the worries going on. We're just being really present and mindful Focusing just on this little task so you get a bit of a chance to de-stress. And the other thing we're focusing on here today is just learning something new. We don't need to do our absolute best or a perfect job to make it worthwhile doing something. I think that's a really important lesson that we can forget sometimes. We don't need it to always be our absolute best. Showing up and having a go is more important. You can see I'm just coming around the holly leaves for now. We'll come back and add the color into them as we actually do the leaves too. Okay, and that is layer one all done. You can see I've got a really nice thick black border and it is pretty thick. I want that thickness because I want this to be a really deep edge. Don't ever be afraid to really use those colors and extend them out. It's just going to make that a nice darker and richer blend, which is what we're aiming for here today. 
Next color that we're going to use is Tuscan Red. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure that pencil is nice and sharp first. But then I come the whole way back over that black and I extend out a little further. Now, if you want to start flattening some of the tooth in the black area, you can. The way that we do this is not with more pressure, though. It's with a smaller stroke. So what I want you to focus on is coming in and you can see here, I'm taking my time a little more and doing like tiny little microscopic circles. That will get into the tooth of the paper and keep the transition smooth between the colors. If I use too much pressure here, I'm going to get a line between the colors. So we don't want pressure, we want smaller strokes. That is your secret. And that's the one thing that makes this technique tricky because you know what it requires? It requires a very important skill that takes a very long time to not only learn but master as well. And it is patience. But you weren't expecting that. <laughs> and I wish I could teach you all that. Hopefully a little bit, you gain a little bit of that understanding through doing our classes regularly. But when we work on large areas like this, there is a tendency to rush. We want to get to the good stuff in the middle. So we tend to rush big areas like this because we tune out a little bit and we can start to get a little bit bored. Our mind starts to wander. We start thinking about other things. And this is very, very normal. However, what this means is that we're actually slipping out of mindfulness. So you're becoming distracted and less patient. And this is when anxieties can start to come into play because we all of a sudden are not so focused on what we're doing. We're thinking about everything else. We're thinking about what we have to do later today. We're thinking about appointments that we have or, you know, are we awaiting test results? Is the family member sick right now? Do we have someone who is maybe waiting for our time? All of these things can take you out of mindfulness. And it's really, really important to be aware of this because when we have time for self-care, Self-care time is about de-stressing. It's about giving back to yourself, which allows you to actually give more of yourself to those people, your work, or those situations that need it. By focusing on your stress levels, you're able to be in more control of your emotions. So you can feel a lot more balanced, a lot more clear-headed when making decisions, when dealing with people, when dealing with stress. And this is why there is such a focus on self-care these days. I know things like self-care, meditation, mindfulness, they can sound a little lame, a little hokey. It can sound a little silly to talk about this stuff. It has a bit of that sort of stigma around it. But there's a reason why there's so much information about it these days. And it's because so many people are struggling. So many people are struggling with depression, with anxiety, and it actually manifests itself into physical stress as well. So you can actually find you start getting physical symptoms. You may get a lot of headaches. You may feel a little bit nauseous, run down, tired, sore if you have chronic pain stress can amplify your chronic pain conditions as well there's a lot of information tied back to chronic pain and trauma healing and understanding your stress response because if you can do that it will impact your overall pain levels so a lot of studies out there on this sort of stuff so when you do something like your classes here today I want you to remember that you're not doing this because you're prioritizing coloring. It's 100% not what you're doing. It's not why you purchased a class in the first place. It's not why you have this as a hobby. 
You have this because you are prioritizing you. This is your chance to de-stress, to focus on the present moment so you can let some of that stress just fall by the wayside, even if you're only able to give 10 minutes of your time here today. That's 10 minutes of time for you prioritizing your emotional and physical health, which can help you with everything else going on. Your family want the best for you, and it's important that you want the best of you as well. It always says to our loved ones or those that we're caring for that you need to be in your best mind frame to be able to give to them too. So don't ever feel guilty. Do you feel annoyed when your family takes time for them? And if the answer is yes, it may be that you're not taking that time for you. So you have a little bit of resentment around that. And if the answer is no, it's just because you want them to enjoy their time, obviously. And that's how they feel back for you as well. If you struggle with any of these concepts, please feel free to get in touch anytime. Our classes always come with free private tutoring, but I'm always available for any art therapy help and tips if you ever want someone to chat with as well. So you can get the most out of taking this time for you here today. So don't ever feel nervous reaching out. There's never any judgment. It's just about making sure you're confident, happy and getting the most from your hobbies to help you in all areas of life. Okay, next color is Crimson Lake. So now we're just doing the same thing. We keep repeating, keep bringing in toward the middle, making sure that we don't have any hard lines where these colors are transforming into each other. You can see I don't need to come the whole way back to the black. I'm just sort of starting maybe about halfway, bringing over to reduce some of that tooth before I start extending out. Now, if you feel yourself rushing and losing that patience here today, you can try some breath work. So what we can do is we can breathe in for four seconds. So let's do that together. So breathe in. I want you to hold it for a couple of seconds. And then let that back out for four as well. You can repeat that a few times. And breathe out and breathe in hold and then breathe out and then bring your mind back to what we're working on in front of us so focus on the pressure you're placing on that pencil the size of your stroke are you doing little strokes to get into the tooth or are you focusing on just getting some coverage down first some larger strokes to get that coverage and then maybe a second layer of smaller strokes to flatten it down focus on buzzing up that edge as you finish focus on the color how dark do you want that color to be do you have the depth is each color extending as far out as mine or as far out as you'd like it these little questions force you to be present in the moment. So that's what encourages us to start practicing our patience. We're being present, which means we're being mindful, which means we're allowing stress to just take the back seat. And this can start being applied to everyday things. So if you're washing the dishes, for example, feel how hot or, or cool the water is. Do you have bubbles? How do they feel against your skin? How clean is the dish that you're cleaning right now? Do you need extra dish liquid to get that stain off? All these little things are encouraging you to stay present. And the more we start to practice that in everyday life, the more we can control our patience and bring us down from like those emotions of anger, anxiety, frustration, 
and even depression as well. It's not a cure, but it is a management tool. And that's why whenever you feel any of those emotions, recognize that maybe this means you actually need a little mindful break. If you're struggling and you might not be feeling that now, you're coloring along, so that's okay. But if you are struggling outside of class one time, maybe remind yourself, okay, the emotions I'm feeling are telling me I need a little break right now. So I'm just going to grab my coloring. I'm just going to do 10 minutes and feel a little bit better. Control those emotions as they impact all of those facets of life. Next color is my crimson red. So we're really getting closer in toward that center now. Make sure your strokes are getting nice and small. As you come in toward these holly leaves, we could maybe extend a little bit between the shapes. Again, we'll come back a bit later and work around them. But we can kind of at least just do a little bit of work to get them started here. And just repeat what we've already been doing. And then my last color is Carmine Red. Now we're getting in right up next to our actual image here. So your pencil is best if it's sharp because then you'll be able to really come through to a few layers and get that transition uh, nice and smooth, get these nice strong edges next to the image as well. So you can see I'm taking my time to come around those details. Sharpen up your pencil as you need. As soon as you find it hard to draw those final lines, it's probably a bit on the blunt side. What you'll notice as well is every so often I twist my pencil and that's allowing me to work on the sharpest edge of the pencil before I sharpen it too. So I can get a little bit more use out of the pencil before I need to resharpen it. So as soon as I feel it going blunt, I just lift it and give it a little twist. And then I keep going a few times. And then when it's just too blunt overall, that's when I give it a quick sharpen. You can see I'm just coming back through some of these other layers just to flatten a little of that tooth as well. Notice I still have a lot of the little white speckles showing through in the background. 
I'm not in a rush to get rid of them. And I'll show you a little trick in the next step to help me with that. Just work on getting the vibrancy, the level that you want. So my layers, I've done quite a few here. And overall, even though it's not 100% smooth, the color is as bright as I ultimately want it. So again, remember if yours is super, super light, it's okay, but it's time to start working on adding a little more pressure with your coloring. And if you get to the end here and you still have a lot of tooth left, all you need to do is you need to come back from the darkest color and just repeat the steps. Just build it up again, maybe a little bit more pressure and those smaller strokes to have that control. Okay, now when we get to the end here, again, it's pretty smooth, we've got good vibrancy, but we've got a lot of tooth showing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my colorless blender pencil to help me flatten this. Now, the blender pencil is the same core as the pencil you're using, but it doesn't have any colored pigment in it. So what this means is it helps to speed up the process in coloring something like this. Rather than coming back with all of our pencils again and relayering, I can just use the blender over the top. So once you're happy with this background, if you need to do other layers, come through and do them first. But once you're happy, then you can use that blender to come through and flatten the last of the tooth. I start in the darkest area and I just make sure that the pencil is nice and sharp. And I do a few strokes just over the very edge first. This will help you clean it up, make sure the edge isn't fuzzy. You can get a nice sharp line on it as well. And once that's done, we can blend from this darker area in toward the lighter. And we are basically pushing around all of that pigment that's on the paper. I like to use a small circular stroke to push the pigment here. And that'll ensure that we are keeping the transition between the colors nice and smooth. So if you have hard edges between the colors, you may it may be because you didn't smooth out between each color at the start so it's important before you use a blender try and get that smooth that'll help to maintain those smooth transitions overall as well and it may be that you didn't have enough pigment down on the paper as well so you're using your blender a bit too early if you're not happy with the result and you're not sure why you're not quite getting this step just take a quick photo and send it through to me on private message. So your classes always come with free one-on-one -on -one private tutoring with me. And we go through absolutely anything at all to help you feel more confident with those results. So don't ever just put something aside and go, oh, that was too hard. I don't really know what went wrong or how it works. It actually means that that's the time you 100% need the assistance. Because if you don't know how something works, getting that help is how it gets easier and how you tweak your results for next time. But you'd be surprised, it's really sad, how many people struggle and so they just put it aside or they just give up. And I've never heard from them, I never see what they create and they just give up on themselves. No one person starts a new skill and instantly finds it easy or finds it easy after any practice. It should always push you a little bit. So don't ever feel discouraged if something is hard. If something is hard, it just means that you've actually found a lesson that you need to learn. And you may need a little bit of assistance to get you there. There's absolutely no shame in that. There's a reason why when we go to school, we don't just learn from a textbook. Teachers are there because actually getting feedback and assistance, asking questions and getting that help is invaluable. Use the help that's freely available to you. I cannot stress that enough. And that is a big, big reason of why doing a class is so different than YouTube. When you do a YouTube, you don't know why your coloring is not working out like the person who's showing you. And, you know, you can email them and try and ask for help, but you're getting someone who doesn't have that knowledge of private tutoring. 
you're getting someone who probably doesn't want to give you all that time to help you as well. When you do a class, I mean, I've been doing free private tutoring for over eight years now on all of your work. I think it's something that I personally pride myself on being able to look at someone's coloring and assessing what is and isn't working so we can modify it so they can be happy with their result. So use this help that's available to you. It's an important tool that'll help you just grow and grow. Even if you've been coloring for some time, there's always room to improve. Once you've finished the background, the last thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of sparkle or some stars in this background to add a little bit of uh, extra detail. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a white pencil and I've got a white gel pen. I'm using a Uniball Signo pen here. The gel pens aren't great over pencils. They can get a little bit uh, stuck with the wax. So I would recommend actually getting a paint marker. The Molotow mar marker is a really good one, which is M-O-L-O-T-O-W. It comes in a super, super fine nib. I think it's like 0.2 of a mil. Uh, so that's a really good one. Uh, but, you know, I just use a gel pen and if it stops working, I just scribble out on a piece of colored card until I see it's come back and I keep going. So what I do here is I firstly get a white pencil and I just draw in the shape of a cross and I do a few layers back and forth. This will allow me to penetrate through the pigment that's already there. And I just extend it out to the side so it's got like that softened edge. So you can see it's thicker in the center and then it just sort of fades out. Now we wanna brighten that up. So I get the gel pen back. I do a big circle straight in the center and I pull out a little of the ink in each side. So I pull it just a small way and I do quite a few layers to build it up. And I grab back my white pencil and just over the very edge, I just really, really lightly pull that ink out. And you can see I can fade that into the lighter cross that was beneath that I did with the pencil earlier. So this gets like that faded glowing effect on the star. So you can do as many or few of these as you like in any position that you like. There is no right or wrong way to do this. You can make them any size you like as well. Just draw in the cross first and make sure you get the fade. So thicker in the center part and then just like soften it out with less pressure on the sides. And then you might do one over here. It's always going to show up brighter against the darker background as well. So do as many of you as you like. Then you can grab your gel pen and we do a big circle in the center and then from there extend out that little cross shape. And then just grab that white pencil back and you're just very lightly pulling the extra ink on the very, very edge. And then once you're happy with that, grab the gel pen back and I'm going to do dots of all different sizes just to create like that sparkle effect around them. Now, if you struggle with doing that sort of natural randomized look try speeding yourself up working quickly means that you've got less time to think it through and it will look a little bit more random for you and you can see i'm kind of doing it in clusters as well i like to do like a bigger one and then i'll just do like a couple of smaller ones around it and that is our background all colored up so we've gone through a lot of theory just in this one quick lesson here today. These techniques can apply to absolutely any image you color up as well. But remember, it takes time and practice for these techniques to really sink in and become part of your skill set. Don't forget to join me over at kidandclouded.com to color up the rest of this image with me as well. And I'd love if you would even share your coloring from today's tutorial over in our free Facebook community. 
We have over 30,000 people who just love coloring and sharing their own work, whether it's from class or not, to celebrate their growth. We're not a group about competition, being perfect or better than anyone else, but just supporting each other in this hobby and our self-care journeys. I really hope you've enjoyed this free lesson. And if you have any questions at all, please do reach out anytime. Thank you so much for coloring and I hope to see you over in our classrooms.